Greetings to you from wherever you're watching us tonight. Thanks for joining us on the Friday edition of the show. And hear me, Adebayo. Well, tonight on the show, we will be looking at club football for the men and uh, the women. Uh, to be precise, CAF club competitions, the CAF Champions League, and of course, the Confederations Cup. We'll be doing our projections uh, for uh, the Nigerian teams in the competition. We'll also be looking at the English Premier League. We're we'll taking a look at the matches to be played over the weekend, all right? So that's the outlook of uh, the show. Uh, we uh, bid you to sit back and relax as we take you on a trip across the money-spinning world of sports. It's a two-man show. My colleague Osno Konakman is suited and ready as we take you along on this ride. What a great things to you, Yemi, and of course, everyone joining us on the show tonight. Always an action-packed world of sports. And thank God it's Friday, and that means... We're getting into a sporting weekend of different activities, and I'm so loving it. Remember, we're also counting down to the Paralympics. Team Nigeria, uh, athletes already touched down in Paris, and we're just waiting for them to start competing. Yes, the Premier League will be back tomorrow. Loads of talking points from that one, and we just kind of wait here, I mean, to see all of the action and then get back on the show to talk about it. Yeah, that's it. So um, a lot of sporting events to uh, talk about. Let's quickly introduce um, our guest in the Lagos uh, studio, uh, Dotun Agumbiari joins us now uh, as we take a look at all the things are happening in the fast paced money, speeding, entertaining, and sometimes rewarding world of sports. Uh, greetings to you, Dotun. Thanks for joining us on the show tonight. Well, good evening, Yemi. All right. So, I mean, let me dive straight uh, into it. Uh, let's start with the calf. Champions League, uh, we'll start uh, with uh, the guys. Um, and of course, in a bit, I'll go across the screen uh, to talk about the flying antelopes. But Dr. let me get your thoughts. I know you're monitoring a lot of things happening. But this one we're talking about, everything already concluded. Rangers, through to the next round. But what we can be talking about now is how they did it. Are, are you impressed with how they did it? It's in front of the Comoros. No disrespect uh, to Zilema Jew, but probably you expected a better scoreline. And then 1-1, the 2-1 on aggregate for the flying antelopes. Of course, everyone across the world expects a better scoreline. Haven't traveled on the road, got the better of your, of the, of your opponent and come back home, played out a one all through. It says the, actually, the team studied them better after the first leg and they came back to Nigeria to play that a one all through. But for Rangers International, I think this is just a start. They understand the tournament very well. This is not the first time they're actually going into the cup. Uh, organized football club tournament. Uh, I, I think if they've, they've actually put their house in all that better, talking about better tactics and what have you, they would, they should have won this by at least three goals to zero because you are playing against a team, a less fancy side when it comes to uh, club championship in Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that this is a warning message to them that going into the next round of this tournament, you need to be up and doing at all stage, you need to be up and doing in the attack at the midfield, also at the defense, and the goalkeeper also coming with this game. All right. Uh, let me just quickly go across the screen uh, to give you a confirmation of uh, the results. And th th there's something that is like a poor consolation somehow. Uh, I'll get us in thoughts uh, on that one. Then you have it on your screen. Rangers International representing Nigeria in the preliminary round uh, of the CAF Champions League, the second leg. The Flying Antelopes in Uyo played a one-off draw with Zilma Jew of the Comoros. And on the strength of that, uh, of course, he ended 2-1 on aggregate for uh, the Flying uh, Antelopes. And of course, you know, both, both uh, matches, first and second level, played in Uyo. Uh, and of course, so it was like Rangers playing at home in both legs. And, and, and you know, everybody expected uh, the margin to be wider than this. Uh, so also, let me uh, come to you. Um, well, some people are already saying, well, it looks like because we're seeing um, the, the, the pathway to the Champions League, uh, it looks like they wouldn't be facing uh, any of these dreaded North African teams. Maybe that's some consolation and maybe, maybe eventually we'll get a team, uh, that, uh, a club side that will get into the money spinning group stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we talked about this yesterday and we expressed our fears I said, look, Rangers, they, they didn't do enough in that first, you know, that first leg game that I was played in New York. And then we thought that, okay, this one, they would just come out and then do something different. But look at how nervy. In fact, they conceded seven minutes after they scored. So it tells you 
Zuma Jules, they looked at themselves and said, look, from everything we saw from the first game, we can actually beat this team. And they got into this game with the mindset that, look, it's a neutral ground. Rangers don't play in New York. You know, so they just tell about it. This is where we played the first leg match and they could only score us one goal. So we need to just come today and see how we can, you know, win 2-1. So if that, that was the result, <laughs> then it's a different analysis that I'll be making. But yeah, as I said, this is football where anything can happen. They will say they did just enough to, 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 to advance. You know, but when you're playing these sort of competitions, we always say it's as good as your last game because that's what your opponent we use to analyze you. But let's, let's just hope that they will keep getting better. But I doubt it. And that's because we never learn. We told Rangers, if you are to do well at this competition, it's the CAF Champions League, it's serious business, you need to make good use of your, well, your stadium. They didn't fix it. Now they're playing in New York. It's never the same. This is Rangers. This shouldn't be happening to a top team in league football in Nigeria. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's Friday. I'm trying to get, you know, excited to the weekend. Talk about sports the way you should talk about it. Beautiful goals, fine football, whatever is breaking, we put it out there. Not to come and talk about the issues, the problems, the difficulties that we've always talked about. The setbacks, holding back football in Nigeria. And we're not just doing what we have to do to change it. All right. I mean, I'm going to get you to talk on this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't know if it's poor consolation, but, but I'm looking at a pathway and it looks like some of these dreaded teams are not on their pathway. So is, is that any consolation? But I get your point. If this is the way they're going to play, I mean, you, you should be afraid of anybody. But then again, that pathway, it, I don't know, on paper, uh, looks a bit better. It looks better, yeah, I mean, but you know the part you and I were waiting for. We want to see them get into the group stage. That's the money spinning stage. That's the prestige stage. How you get into that stage is very, very important. And the journey starts now with these first two matches I've seen against the Umaju of Comoros, you know. And I would not disrespect. I was, I've been doing loads of research about the team, and I'm saying this isn't the sort of team that should give you know, um, Rangers' problems. But yes, you want to look at it and say, okay, they've got a good pass. It's going to be okay. But if you go through preliminary, we're talking good part. Is it going to be the same as when you get into the group stage? So it means you have to keep getting better. So the first game, we had, we had questions to ask. Because, ah, why did they play this way? I said, okay, no problem. The second game is still in Nigeria. Rangers is supposed to be the home team. But the disadvantage is it's not Enugu, it's Uyo, and that showed today, I mean. All right, did, um, I don't know, um, Dotu, what would you be expecting? Uh, because not much can be done. They probably registered the players they wanted to register. Um, the stadium also talked about between now and the next game, it probably still um, would be, be, be ready. So what can be done? You know, because... They have the players. The bulk of the players that won the league still there. Yeah. So, and they also promised to recruit, which they did. So, it, it can't be because they don't have the players. But, but something needs. Because this kind of result is scary. Mm -hmm. Whoever you're playing against. Even though some of us are saying, well, it looks like they won't meet this North African team. So, whoever they meet, this kind of performance is scary. No, I said the other time that if you are in the... Uh, African Cup uh, Football Club Tournament, you should always be aware to this truth that you need to always get it done in the early part of the game. Owing to the fact that when you actually come up against your opponents, either on the road or even at home, if you are not scoring enough goal, you can actually come back to affect yes. what will happen to you in the next round. They played against a team that a less fancy side, no disrespect, uh, uh, we, but if you now look at how the game did unfold, you will agree with me that they never did enough. Uh, but though they actually sailed through to the next round, but you, you still actually come to this reality that the team never performed at the highest level. We all desire they perform. 
But I, I, what I think that needs to be done, number one, the stadium needs to be fixed so that before they actually start the preliminary stage, so they can start playing at home. Though it's close by, by September, they're actually going to do that. But I'm not sure that the stadium can be fixed before then. And the, 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 the management, talking about the coaching crew rather, they need to actually begin to understudy and study the teams they will be playing against. If you look at a football game, you need to actually go beyond playing on the field, analyzing your opponents, even right on your desk, calling all the players to, the, to a round table, looking at the opponents you are playing against, okay? This is their best way of playing. They are very good in attack. They are very good in defense. What can we do to counter whatever they are doing? That should always be what uh, the tactical team of a team actually do in and out of the team, always, whenever they are playing against, even in the league, they need to do that. But when it comes to club cup tournament like this, you need to actually come with your uh, uh, a, a game, talking about your, your tactical mm -hmm. ability being up yeah. to, uh, to, to the highest level you know you can actually do it. All right. If they can do that, I think they should actually see themselves sailing through to the next round of the tournament. All right. Uh, the good thing all of us can agree on is that they are through to the next round. And so we say better luck. Uh, next time. All right, let's talk about um, a team that we love, but our hearts are in our mouths because of the situation uh, they found themselves in. Remo Stars, an expert of core, uh, is what we're going to look at. And we're going to look at the situation. It's going to come up on your screen uh, any uh, moment. I'll just turn around and uh, quickly uh, talk about it. FAI Rabat uh, of Morocco up against uh, Remo Stars. Remo Stars have a 2 1 advantage from the first leg. Uh, from some of the reports we're getting at Austin, uh, we heard that Rebel Stars uh, trained um, in Morocco with loud loudspeakers on because they, they, they are quite aware of how intimidating it's going to be when they play uh, tomorrow. Uh, and they traveled well. I mean, it was colorful. We saw the attire. We saw everything. Uh, Remo Stars uh, beginning to give us a feel. And, and they're becoming regular uh, customers, like we say, uh, in local parlance. Um, four, five seasons now they've been going uh for these competitions uh but then these guys are no easy customers uh, and um my, my heart in my mouth really and i know that's how everybody feels but then again remosters have done it against a north Af african opposition before and we're hoping they do it again this time yeah i would just hope that they repeat what they did September the 11th, 2022. Remember, that was when they went to Asfa and then they played 1 1. It was a fantastic result for Real Stars. And they were, we were hoping that they would go back to Kenneth Stadium and then, you know, get the job done. And they lost by a single goal. Now I'm saying, can they just try to turn the results around? Now you won 2 1 at home. Can you go back to Asfa? and play 1-1, one, one, or just win 1-0, you know, and so we can be fine. But there's something about this Remo Stars. Each time I look at um, Coach Ogumbo and this, and this team and the progress they are making and how the management, they are making deliberate efforts to keep Remo Stars to be that professional team, it makes you want to believe. And if you take a look at the first leg, the only mistake they made was to concede right when we got into second half. Mm -hmm. I think they did just enough in the first half. The Car Junior with the opening goal in the 19th minute, and then they kept that till they went into the break. They came back from the break, and then in the 50th minute, they conceded. I didn't like it, but I was saying they needed to do something to get back into it. And that's a beautiful goal right there by, by the Car Junior. You know, but when... Sadiq Ismail scored that sort of goal that Van Persie scored at the World Cup that got everybody talking, and we're not talking about Sadiq's goal now. I said, Remo should try and just score one more. I mean, if that game had ended 3-1, we would have been having a different analysis, you know. He scored that goal in the 67th minute, and I kept saying, Remo, push, Remo, go. Try to just score one more. It didn't happen. It ended 2-1. I think that's the sort of result they probably need to go back. And if you check the poor communication between goalkeeper and defenders, they need to perfect that because we know the North Africans, they are very good with the counter-attacks, very good with set pieces. That was a long one right there and a beautiful header. And then it was 1-1. So Remo Stars, I like that they got in in good time. Now they are practicing and learning how to, you know, see the noise as motivation and not distraction because it's really going to be noisy, you know, but 
Let me, let me look. They are professionals. This is a familiar ground. Remo stars, believe in yourselves. Go out there. Don't respect them. If you want to go offensive, go offensive. But make sure you're not making mistakes. Now, look at that. That's what a goal by, by Sonic Ismail. And I thought that was even a better goal than the one Van Persie scored. Some would say I'm overdoing it. But that was a beautiful goal. And it sent the fans away. And we're just hoping they were going to score a third one. But it didn't happen. 2 1 is good enough for them taking the second leg. Stay focused. Impossible is nothing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so, um, Dotun, what is your mind telling you? Uh, you know, <laughs> you have a job to do uh, <laughs> as an analyst, but you, but you also, your mind is probably telling you something. What my mind is telling me is not an outcome that I hope to see, um, because I dread this uh, not um, not Africans. But then with the way Remo stars, the way they've traveled, the way, you know, like Austin will say, all of the issues outside of the pitch, they've dealt with it fine. Dealt so with it. what will happen on the pitch is the only thing that's going to determine whether Mm. They go to the next round. Not all of those on-field issues, mm. which all the other clubs are always associated with. So, what is your mind telling you ahead of this second leg? Oh, my <laughs> mind is telling me that it's not really going to be easy for Game of Stars. Uh, like Austin pointed out the other time, the last time they actually went far uh, to the same country. They actually played out a one-all draw and came back home to lost by long goal. But this time around, they actually, they are one goal advantage going into the second leg, going to the fact that they won by two goals to one. And if you actually now take a course, we look at the team they are playing against. They are actually a traditional team when it's going to a uh, Cup Champions League and Cup Confederation, uh, Confederation Cup. And if you look at Real Monsters, what they've been able to do over the past two, three, four mm -hmm, years mm -hmm. in Cup competition tournaments, you actually say that they, they've gathered enough experience and with the gaffer in charge of the team who have actually managed several teams in Nigerian Professional, uh, Nigerian Premier uh, Football League and also uh, actually participated in CAF Champions League and Confederation Cup, you can actually propel them to a success owing to the fact that they know what they are looking for. They want to get to the preliminary stage of the tournament and uh, they actually want to become a mainstay when it comes to uh, football club tournament in Africa. Look at what you said you the other time talking about the off-feed activities have been totally, thoroughly dealt with and they're actually not having any problem when it comes to management. And uh, going to the field of play, they, uh, they actually need to come with their A-game week in, week out to always make sure that they register themselves in the mind of the soccer-loving Nigerian people. Uh, if you now look at it, for them, they should just actually understudy again and study again and restudy uh, the Moroccans talking about what you pointed out the other time, uh, tactically, talking about the area draw, they are always wonderful. Talking about the counter-attack play, they are always fantastic. So if we can actually stop all of this uh, by the Moroccans, maybe you can actually take them to the cleaners or get a draw and qualify for the next round. You, you, you know, also, um, my, my fear, and my, the area I worry about it's not even all the things you guys are. Gamesmanship. The ability to manage a game. You know, look, the coach can tell you all the beautiful things. He's not going to be on the field with you. So it's down to the players on the field to be able to manage. Uh, sometimes kick the ball away as far as you can. Sometimes try to break up the play. Sometimes waste waste the time. You, you know, all of this gamesmanship. Just, you know, there, there are things you just pick up while playing football that nobody trains you for. Uh, you understand? Uh, I've seen... Let, let me give a classic example. 1996. A lot of people don't remember this. Uh, there was a situation... I think Wilson Oroma... Atlanta 96. Wilson Oroma was lying on the floor. Got injured. He wanted to stand up quickly. And I saw Ucho Kuchuku <laughs> tell him, Press stay down. there. Stay <laughs> there. And I wasted a few seconds. It was a tough game. Wasted a few seconds. And we were able to cross the line because our opponents probably would have gotten the equalizer. So that's what I'm saying about gamesmanship, the ability to do some of those little things, not necessarily that you scored that you did not score, but some of those things that could, in the end, as simple as the ball boy giving you the ball quickly, you know, those little, little things, how well Remo Stars will be able to do that? How well do you think Remo Stars will be able to do some of those things? I think you might have to agree, Austin. I think they need to go back to watch that first that first leg, that game in 2022 that ended 1-1. They didn't mind the crowd. They didn't respect as far. They played offensive football. They conceded, and 10 minutes later, they scored also. 
You know, I think that's the sort of focus that they will need because the moment you start respecting these North Africans, that's when they take the pressure to you. So Remo stars, they just, they just need to go back. What did they not do right in the last game in, at home and see ways that they will try. They need to avoid errors because, of course, there will be pressure on the referee. That stadium will be noise, noisy. Mm -hmm. And that's why they know that if Remo stars scores just one goal, then everything will change. So they will want to put pressure. So gamesmanship here might work, but it can also backfire, yeah, me. That's why I just want them to approach the game like it's goalless. We just need to come out here and see if we can win by 1-0, or if possible, play 1-1. One, one. You know, that's the only mindset that can make Remo stars survive what is waiting for them tomorrow because it's going to be very, very difficult. And we know... Because once these guys get a goal away from home, these North Africans, when they're going back home, they've, they've said to themselves that they will place you on the slaughter lab. So I want Remo Stars to have that offensive mindset. If you are going defensive, be careful. Don't jump on all those tackles that we see in the MPFL. Mm. This is continental football, and a lot of things will be against you. The referee, the fans, the players will be soaking pressure. So you need to minimize your mistakes and keep pushing them to frustrate them. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, there's still so much more to talk about. Particularly, what can El Kanemi do to stay in the CAF Confederation Cup? Don't go anywhere. Hey. Welcome back to tonight on your award-winning sports-loving channels, television. We're taking a look at what's going on in the CAF Champions League and the CAF Confederations Cup. Let's set the record straight. I said the Remo Stars game is tomorrow. No, I think it was El Canemi's game that I had on my mind. That's the game that is tomorrow. Remo Stars will play on Sunday. Dr. let's get you talking. Are you scared for Remo Stars? <laughs> Not really scared, but like I said the other time, that it's really going to be tough for them. And if you actually take a cursory look at what happened during the first leg, you will say that they need to actually do more than what they did during the course of the game. And uh, if you look at the uh, North African counterpart, what they actually do on the field of play, remember the antics? <laughs> when they score you, they start falling, they start slipping, they start doing everything they know they could do, only for them to just waste time and make sure they actually got the maximum three points and qualify for the next round. But for Raymond, we all know that they've been there two, three, four, five times. They actually can take a clue from what happened in the past and they are build on it and make sure they actually get what they needed to qualify for the next round. Where must I I wish they actually qualify for the next round of the tournament so we can actually see Nigerian teams flying high in the CAF uh, football club tournament. I can't, I can't remember the last time we did that. that that's, a, that's a painful part. And there's all this talk about reducing our slot. I hope it doesn't happen. All right, uh, Austin talked about it. So let's move uh, to that point. Um, let's talk about the CAF Conversation Cup. Uh, this is one that is quite tricky. El Canami Warriors, uh, the team we want to talk about, they'll be playing tomorrow. I'll go across the screen, give you a situation report, and let you know they're going to be playing a, game, a, uh, a team from Benin. Uh, and so, uh, I don't know, it's tough. Play the one-all draw at home. And uh, let me just go across. Uh, you see it now, uh, if you have not been following. A one-all draw from the first leg. Uh, the team uh, from uh, our neighbors uh, right there. And, I mean, trust me, I wouldn't be surprised. 50% uh, of these guys might just be Nigerians. <laughs> so, so that's what you get anytime uh, you're playing uh, Bella Republic. So uh, no, no surprises. But, but a one-all draw... It's like walking on teen highs, Dr. Mm -hmm. It's like biscuit. Of course. It cracks. Of course. And, and you, you know, you don't, you don't know where it's going to go. It's, it's very risky. So, if, if a team could come to your house and play your one or draw, and you go to their house, anything could happen. Anything can happen. Uh, for Heck and Emmy Warriors, they actually never covered themselves in glory. Uh, during the course of the first leg here in Nigeria, I was thinking they are going to take them to the cleaners, but that was not what we saw. Though they did actually... They did better than the opponents. They were the one actually pulling the strings during the course of the game. Uh, they actually never converted chances created. They were profligate in front of goal. And uh, at the long run, they actually considered. They paid for uh, it. They very painful. Uh, very painful to actually concede at home. But going to the second leg, it seemed like, I don't like to say less fancy side, but sometimes in football, we say it also the fact that the clubs are not 
high, they are not hot there mm -hmm. when it comes to our uh, uh, prestigious football club tournaments. But uh, sometimes when you look at our clubs, like you said, you understand, when was the last time we saw a Nigerian club actually did wonderfully well, get to the highest level of uh, club football cup tournaments in Africa? We've not been seeing that in recent time. And uh, we only have one winner who actually did that back to back, talk, talking about Aim by International. So one, so years ago. Yes, and we saw a team who actually got to the final talking about the former Julius Bega, uh, who were beating in the final. So, so, so if you just take a look at it, we can actually keep talking about what has been happening in Nigerian football, uh, talking about football club tournament and also the CAF Confederation Cup and Champions League. The, the Nigerian teams have not been uh, putting up good shows. Like Economy Warriors did down the first leg, they played out a one or two against budget of Benin Republic. What, what position are they even in their league? What position are they when it comes to? Are they qualifying for the Comfort, uh, Congregation Cup for the first time? If you look at the record, you see that they actually no fit to uh, Economy Warriors. But Economy Warriors could not stamp the authority on the game by putting the ball at the back of the net. But they don't, let's see what happened in the second leg. If they can do one better than how they did in the first leg, if they could qualify for the next round. All right, um, Austin, the picture looks green, um, but, but, but are, are we taking these criticisms too far? Because how can they, for all you know, can just go there and whip their opponents and uh, we might have to hit the umbu pie. Um, and Dr. quite rightly pointed out, they wasted a lot of chances. Although that's not an excuse in football. I mean, <laughs> the name of the game is scoring. Uh, but yeah. do, do you think they can win us over, change our minds with the second leg? No, you know what I mean? No, I, I said it and I'm saying it again. No expectations. We listened to the coach right after they won the President's Federation Cup. The guy listed the problems. They are enormous. He said, look, how are we going to do this? There's financial problem. There's problem of the infrastructure. There's problem of players' welfare. There's problem of, you know, the team, the team getting together to understand the mission, play with the unity of purpose. These are the things that you need to check if you want to win. I'm not saying time and chance cannot happen to El Kanemi Warriors, but look, how far can it take them? You know, even if they beat Daje tomorrow and then they go to the next game, what about when they get to the group stage? See, when you fail to plan, you have plans to fail already. This is a project that fell on El Kanemi Warriors. They didn't plan nothing. There was no scope. There was no financial budget. But because we know Nigeria, everybody just get up, just do it. You just don't do it. You need to do it well. Mm -hmm. You need to do it right. You need to learn from the experience. This is continental football. It means so much to not just the players, but the coaching crew and even the administrative staff because it's beyond the scope of playing football in Nigeria. You need to plan travel. You need to plan welfare. You need to plan hospitality. There is so much. It's not just what you jump up. You see, but because if they say, oh, we cannot execute this now, they think they will consider, people will call it a failure. No. But yeah, I mean, the, the players are professional footballers. The coach wants to up his resume. So, uh, so El Kanemi Warriors will go out there to play. This is a decent team if you talk about the level of football in Nigeria. El Kanemi Warriors is a traditional team. I miss them being in the league, and I'm super proud that they've made their way back into the league now. I want a way to come into the league. Now, you see, it's always with gradual. They wanted to just gain promotion. They gained promotion, and then went on to win the President's Federation's Cup, and now they are here. You know, the first leg, I told you I would take anything. It ended 1-1. I say you can't give what you don't have. That's fair enough. If they go tomorrow, they beat them, I will talk about it. But does it now mean that El Kanemi, El Kanemi Warriors will go all the way to win the Cast Confederation Cup? <laughs> if they do, I'll quit. I'll quit this job. I'll stop talking sports. <laughs> Well, on TV. you said it on live TV, so all right. <laughs> yeah, I will. no problem. I'll stop. No problem. I'll, I'll, I'll do it on social media. I'll do it on TV anymore. Okay. I'll do it. All right. Yeah, you've given yourself a way of escape, but no problem. All right. Uh, let's let's move on um, on the show now, and um, I talk about this. This is hard for me. Maybe I just yield to Austin, uh, but but I'll take this result first. Um, Wafu B qualifier. He was calf women's um, champions league. Edo Queens. Uh, I mean, making all of us smile, painting themselves, 
you know, doing themselves well uh, with the way they've been playing. And of course, another 3-0 uh, victory, the result uh, on your screen. Uh, and they, they played against the opponents from Bella Republic, hammered them a three. And of course, from the Zona qualifiers now, I mean, uh, it's smooth and plain sailing for Edo Queens. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that they got the job done. I said for me, it was all about, you know, sustaining the momentum. Edo Queens, what a story. And it's a clear testament of how the state government decided to, you know, give it attention. They had a win, and it rubbed off on Bendel Insurance and Edo Queens. There is no way, no politics in this one. Philip Shaibu and the efforts that he put into the team, you can tell. And this Edo Queens, beyond playing league football in Nigeria, the mentality that they took into every year that they take, that they participate in the Betsy or Baseki women's football uh, tournament made them a team that really wanted to play football. And they had courses that they were putting into that, you know, that competition. So against, you know, uh, their, their opponents from, from Benin, I, I was like, it's not going to be a problem. I think they've just shown... El Academy Warriors have to beat teams from Bene Republic. So I think El Academy Warriors should go and work that one. So congratulations to Edo Queens. Now, this is the first part of the project. The second part of the project is the real deal. So I want people to sit back now. What are the lessons learned from the qualifiers? Document important ones and see ways that you can consolidate. Because when women play football, you are not just kicking the ball. You are empowering the girl child. You're creating opportunities. And you are developing that sector that we don't give so much attention in Nigeria. And it is things like this, Yemi, that can actually help us to give it a structure. Yeah, it is. All right. Uh, so let's move on. on the show. Congratulations to uh, Edo Queen's uh, first phase done. Uh, better luck uh, in uh, the next one. All right, in a bit, I'll go across now. Let's talk about the English Premier League. It's interesting now. March day two is upon us. Uh, and of course, we are here to talk about the managers are speaking. We'll listen to a few of them uh, on the show tonight. But first, let me go across and uh, talk about the fixtures. Some interesting fixtures uh, for us. Uh, Dutton will tell us to speak. The Austin will do that as well. Then I'll give you mine as well. Interesting matches to look forward to in the English Premier League. All right, let's start from what's going to happen tomorrow, March Day 2, on Saturday. There you go. Brighton uh, will take on Manchester United. Crystal Palace uh, will take on West Ham. Fulham will take on Leicester City. Then you have Manchester City will be up against Ipswich Town, uh, the new boys. Southampton will take on Nottingham Forest. Tottenham uh, will take on Everton. Everton have just 14 uh, players. Uh, uh, that's what the coach has said, Sean Dyke. So we'll see what happens with that one. Aston Villa, who have become a sort of a bogey team for Arsenal. We'll take on uh, Arsenal at uh, the Villa Park. So these are the matches to be played on uh, Saturday in the English Premier League. And on Sunday, let's go to Sunday uh, quickly, Bournemouth will take on Newcastle. Wolverhampton Wanderers will take on Chelsea. And uh, Liverpool will take on Brentford. All right, so these are very, very uh, interesting uh, fixtures. Well, I said the managers are speaking. Let's quickly uh, listen to one of the managers before we dive in to uh, the analysis. Pep Guardiola has opened his hands wide. He's welcome back. Ilke Ogonohan, and he's also been talking about, um, you know, what to expect uh, in the new season. Let's listen to the Manchester City manager, Pep Guardiola. We'll come back for more. Sports tonight. The reason why we decide that the chance to do it is is for the level he played last season. So in the, his season last season was not, you know, playing the level that we expect he's going to to deliver. Maybe you have to think about it, but you know, even the Euros playing a with Nagel with national team with Nagelsmann played really really good as well. So that's why any. He knows what we want to do. He doesn't need adapt, you know. He knows the city, he knows the club, the mates, and the way we want to play. So we'll be immediately, you know, settle, settle. I, I guess good, and and that's why we we didn't we could do it, and we did it. All right, Pep Guardiola, Doctor, I said something off camera, and <laughs> you smiled. Maybe we should 
tell this guy to leave the English <laughs> Premier League. I mean, because look, that's the only way any other team will win. It seemed that was strong enough that they've brought back OK Gono and they didn't really lose any prominent figure Player. from last season. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe Julian Alvarez. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. But you see Avalon Haaland. Mm. So should we tell this guy to please leave the English Premier League? He, he said before the start of the season, he said the only record you want to break is our record. Yeah. <laughs> so if you look at it very well, he's not really going, he's not really relenting on what he mm -hmm. has done so mm -hmm. far in the EPL. And coming into this new season, you can actually see that playing against Chelsea in their first play, uh, first game of the season, uh, gotten the better of them, even at the very a right home of Chelsea by two goes to zero. You would say that that was indeed a very wonderful one because Chelsea, everyone is saying that they've actually revamped this and that and what have you. It's really good. They are really going to become one among the top teams to be cracked in the EPL. But see what they did today, beating and battered and what have you. But for Man City, what they've been able to do so far over the last five seasons, I would say that that is wonderful. Going up against an East Switch time that is not East Switch town. That is coming into the Premier League after a very long layoff. You see that it's, it's really going to be another run over. Let's not waste time. Run over. Run over. Three run over. Run over. The last time they played against them in the FA Cup, that was about two or three years ago. They got the better of them by four goals to new, four goals to one, even at their very home. And now coming to the Etihad, and we often say it here in Nigeria, Etihad. <laughs> it's hard. It really hard. All right. I, I mean, let me use Austin now. Uh, Pep Guardiola. Doesn't look like it's going, uh, but, you know, a lot of questions, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe some of the, uh, you know, cases, maybe maybe something will come out of it. But aside that, I don't see anybody stopping Manchester City. Yeah, I heard you. I mean, I heard where you said we should just forget about it. Just look at this guy is still, <laughs> still running this thing. I think people just need to take their eyes off Manchester City and play their football. Mm -hmm. Remember when Arsenal was doing so well, they didn't just think about City. The moment you start chopping that table and all you're doing is you're going to look at City's outstanding games or you're looking at, oh, the next game that City will play. Just mind your business. Get your job done. And then you might just cruise away to the title, you know. And look at the time Liverpool won it. That was what happened. The song can come up now and argue that, oh, because it was COVID and all of this and all of that. They just stayed focused, eyes on the prize. Yes, this Manchester City team is intimidating, but they can be beaten. I have seen it. Teams like Crystal Palace have gone to the Etihad and they won. You know, Ipswich might win tomorrow now and they will say, oh, it's just that's the start of the season. But then everyone will start looking at that and then City will come and start cruising it because Pep has got the squad. And irrespective of what is going on with the, the management of the club, he has told his players, our business is the football. You see how focused they are and that's why they're doing so well. Let's go to the other side of Manchester. Manchester United, they started well. Uh, let's just hope that they will not have the sort of season that we saw last season. But then again, they need to fix some of the fundamental problems that existed, particularly how Eric Ten Hag deals with the players in the dressing room. Let's take a listen to some of the talking points coming out of Manchester United and then we'll get Dutton to react to it. Uh, um, I'm very pleased. Um, um, it is showing we're going in the right direction. Uh, we know as a club we have to catch up, but I think it shows our ambitious, our, our ambition, um, the way we want to go. Um, so I think we have uh, done good business, uh, really uh, uh, very good players, quality players who will yeah, add, contribute to our, um, to our squad, to our quality of the squad. So that's it, um, Eric Ten Hag and his Manchester United team. I, I don't I don't know what they want to do this season, but Manchester United cannot afford to be as abysmal as they were last season, Dotun. Uh, of course, they can't do that this season, owing to the fact that they've even made funds available for them to get new players. And if they can actually get uh, new players, new recruiting to the team, talking about, they've got gotten a couple of decent players, talking about defenders and midfielders and what have you. So if they can actually... Of their game, you, we saw the strikers exceed what they did uh, uh, during the first game of the Premier League season. Maybe he can keep scoring like that, and Manchester United will keep being among the top 
and top team in the EPL. But with what they've done, what they did last season, I'm actually not real. ranking them among the best uh, for this season. But if, if they can put up good show week in, week out, they are playing against the team who got the better of them last season, Oman abroad. And if you look at the head-to-head -head between Brighton and uh, Manchester United in the last couple of years, you see that Brighton have actually been gotten the better of them. Mm -hmm. So going into this though, they got the better of Brighton at home last season. My two goes to new, but the second leg, what happened? They were beating black and blue. So I, I don't think they've actually uh, uh, gotten to that level where I will place my hand across my chest and say that Manchester United up against any team in the EPL, they are actually going to take them to the cleaners. I, I think, and I'm going to put my face on this, my face and name on this, um, I'll be surprised if they make it to the Champions League, and if they do, that's really? probably that's probably the highest, because because some of the fundamental issues that could have been addressed with some signings have not, and you know, still a lot of things hanging with Jordan Sanchez still going to be in the team. One of these mm -hmm. guys, one or two players that they are still looking for. Uh, you know, uh, so Maguire is still in the team. I mean, yeah, I mean just it you takes know. it takes about. Five players to just catch fire mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. really lead it and Manchester United will be having a different season entirely. I think what the management would have done is, okay, let's just see what will happen this quarter to the rest of the year. And then in January, they're going to make signings. Maybe, maybe, you know, that might just work for them. But I agree with you. We get into the Champions League will be a good one for them. But this is football where anything can happen. We are just carried away with what Manchester City seem to be doing. But for Arsenal and Mikel Ateta, they can try all they can not to be the almost nearly we were so <laughs> close team this season. Arsenal, yes, they know they must be consistent, but they just lose it when you least expect them, you know, uh, not to lose. The game against Aston Villa still comes to mind. And they take on Aston Villa um, tomorrow. So when you lose six points to Aston Villa and you're playing them at the start of the season, you must show workings. Mikel Arteta has been charging his team. He said that they must be consistent. Yes, when you're consistent, don't lose silly games. That's how you lose the title. John, we knew what we, we wanted to do, what we could do as well, which is important. And you have to put those two things uh, together at the end. And then what is available that really can strengthen the, the squad, can make the team better. Yeah, one of the toughest places to go for sure. And, uh, and we know that and we prepare really well uh, to understand what we have to do. And we will try to go there to win the game. Yeah, we've done it. That's the confidence. Now we have to show it again. And, uh, and tomorrow we have to go there, obviously, with, with that belief. Being very clear what we want to do and, and what we have to do to end the right to win the game. And uh, we'll certainly try to do that again. I can say authoritatively that it was that defeat to, that loss to Aston Villa, the Emirates, that blew the title for Arsenal. So Arsenal must punish Villa tomorrow. Dot to Arsenal, the good thing that I've seen, part of the consistency, they've kept the bulk of the squad mm -hmm. and they're still consolidating the main business. Of course, they mean business. If you look at what they did last season, uh, uh, you will say that they, they, they actually uh, did all they know they could do to lay their hands on the golden diadem that have eluded them for many years. Uh, but this time around, it's really going to be a different ball game going to the fact that other teams are actually putting up one or two teams to make sure they compete for the title as well. Look at Liverpool, look at uh, Manchester United, like we already talked about the other time. But for Arsenal, coming up against Aston Villa, Aston Villa, like you said, they're actually coming a boogie team to Arsenal. But if you look at the record over the past years, Arsenal traveling to the Villa Park, they've always been taking them to the cleaners, even at their very home ground. Remember the dramatic victory last two season, winning by 4-2 to 4-2. Uh, uh, if they can actually take a, a clip from all those games, maybe this time around they are going to take them to the cleaners. Remember, he said just now himself, uh, talking about the theater, that that what made them do, lost the Premier League title last season was the game they lost against Aston Villa. Yeah. So if they can actually do it one better than them this season, maybe they will win the title. All right. Uh, I, I guess um, it, that, that's a good place to leave it uh, because we're pressed for time across the finish line. I would have loved to talk about Chelsea, uh, but I'm very sure time will not yeah. allow us to uh, do that uh, on other show uh, tonight. Of course, we'll be back uh, to look at the results uh, when they come. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see good football yeah. over the weekend. All right, Austin, I think that's much we can take. Uh, we we yeah. have to go.
Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. I mean, at some point, I started laughing at you guys, you know, because you guys would have been frustrated with the way this season has been in the last two two years. But hey, you never know. <laughs> maybe this year, maybe, just maybe, the Gunners <laughs> can just get it done. That's the show. In London, I'm Austin, O'Connor fan. In everything you do, remember, keep, keep talking sports. Bye for now. All right. I'm not going to say anything for that. Anyway, it's a wrap uh, here in Lagos. It's the last one uh, for the week. Uh, but before we go, I want to thank Dr. Agubiadi yeah, for his time on the show. Much. Thank you very much. But the worst thing is actually it's going to No, no, we're not going to say anything. We're not going to say anything. All right. All right. Thank you for allowing us to be a part uh, of your day. Uh, we appreciate that. Of course, uh, we'll do our best to always inform, uh, of course, educate you. Uh, in the things happening in the amazing fast space, money spinning, world of sports. I'm Amy Adebayo. We'll see you next week.